Okay, so if you'll please stand, our opening hymn is Gather Your People. Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We have been called, we've been chosen by Christ to follow him. Our vocation in life is to follow Jesus Christ in whatever particular lifestyle or whatever, whether it's marriage or priesthood, religious life or mission work, we are called to follow Christ. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these holy mysteries we call to mind our sins. <clears throat> I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heaven the King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. I'm sorry, this is the second Sunday in ordinary time. I'm sorry. The second Sunday. Okay. Almighty, ever-living God, who have governed all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the new Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. 
The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. I did not call you, Eli said, go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said, you called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son, go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, Go to sleep, and if you are called, a reply, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of his to be without effect. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. I have waited, waited for the Lord, and he stooped toward me and heard my cry, and he put a new song into my mouth, a hymn to our God. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. Sacrifice or offering you wished not, but ears open to obedience you gave me. Holocausts or sin offerings you sought not, then said I, Behold, I come. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. In the written scroll it is prescribed for me to do your will, O my God, is my delight, and your law is within my heart. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. I announced your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips as you, O Lord, know. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. <clears throat> A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the body is not for immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? But whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Avoid immorality. Every other sin is a person commits is outside the body, but the immoral, immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been purchased at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Be Please stand. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John was standing with two of his disciples and as he watched Jesus walk by he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. And Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translate means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and you will see. 
So they went and saw where Jesus was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. And then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is all translated Peter, the gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon and welcome to Corpus Christi Church. Today, I guess I have to correct myself, especially on my video. It's actually the second Sunday of Ordinary Time. I guess I was thinking a little uh, week ahead. The second collection this weekend is for Respect Life Ministries. Uh, you can deposit your offering in the second collection slot that you see in the back church. There's little slots where we usually do it for building fund. You put it in there and the general collection is in the first collection box. Um, I wonder how many of our parishioners are aware that we have bingo in the Marion Hall every Tuesday from 5 p.m. until about 8.30 p.m. Last year we would average between 110 to 125 people. Obviously, as you know, when the pandemic hit, we shut down bingo. Uh, when we started back, I think we tried to start back in the summer and then we stopped it. And then we started back up in the fall and we had a small gathering of people. But it eventually began to grow some numbers of between, I would say about, uh, about 60, sometimes 60, 70. Uh, um, but we still had a small ga gathering. But by December, it started to fall back. And only now a small apprishner, a sm only a very small smidgen of parishioners actually attend that. Most of the people that come are from the outside. Now we realize that people are concerned about the pandemic and social distancing. So I can assure you that our volunteers at Bingo make sure everything is sanitized and social distance is practice. I know that's a concern for a lot of people today. There is nothing to be concerned about that. I invite you to come this Tuesday and have some fun. And they have a lot of fun there, okay? In the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please join me in the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sins, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Today we hear in our gospel from John, reading, calling the calling of Jesus' first disciples. His first disciples were the followers of St. John the Baptist at the River Jordan. When Jesus appeared again by the river, St. John the Baptist immediately pointed to his disciples, saying, Behold the Lamb of God, referring to Jesus. Time, and, and you know, the Lamb of God refers that Jesus would be the Lamb that would be sacrificed on the cross. He would suffer and die and be risen again. The time had come for the disciples to move forward and follow the Messiah, the Savior of the world. St. John knew that his role, his mission, had ended. Now he must decrease while Jesus increases. As the months passed, Jesus would assemble 12 men to be part of his inner circle and he would call them apostles. The word apostle means one who has been sent. They were a motley crew of fishermen, tax collector, an agnostic, a relative, and even a member of the zealot party. Of the 12, one would betray Jesus, Jesus and his name was Judas Iscariot. Judas, unfortunately, was in love with pleasure and money. But despite all the weaknesses and backgrounds of these 12 men, Jesus called them to follow him. He, would, he could have called, of course, the elite of Jewish society. He could have called the Pharisees or the scribes or members of the Sanhedrin to follow him. That would be the logical thinking, right? You would say, okay. However, he called the unlikely candidates to be the foundation of his church. Yes, the remarkable thing about the clergy of the church today and throughout history is that they often come from the most humble and obscure backgrounds. For example, we know the story about, we should be familiar with the story of St. John Vianney. St. John Vianney came from a poor family. 
He was a terrible student, really a bad student in, in the seminary. He couldn't grasp the Latin, but somehow or another he struggled for years, and eventually he was ordained. And of course, what a priest he became, a very humble priest who suffered very much and was attacked by the devil many times because he was faithful to the truth. He was very faithful to the truth. And that's why he had the ability to be able to uh, read people's hearts, okay? But the devil hated him because of that. So he suffered much, but he accepted that as the price of his vocation. Beautiful vocations are born from a deep intimacy with Jesus. And when I'm speaking about vocations, brothers and sisters, I'm not just simply uh, referring to the priesthood or religious life, but also marriages. The vocation of fatherhood, the vocation of motherhood, okay? Uh, or the mission work of the church. The word vocation means calling, vocare from Latin, a calling. This calling comes from God. God calls us in the inner recesses of our heart. God is asking us to follow him in an intimate way. Remember our Lord's words. If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Any God-given vocation involves these three ingredients. Self-denial, embracing suffering and struggle, and going where the Lord wants us to go. We go where He wants us, not where we want, we go with Him. If it's anything other than that, it's not a vocation. It doesn't come from God. A vocation to the priesthood, to religious life, to the mission work, or to the marriage is born out of a long period of discernment. Sure, you often may hear stories of someone that they met each other's bride or their husband immediately and it was loved immediately, okay? You'll hear stories like that, okay? But it's rare. It doesn't happen that often. Because um, a lot of people, it takes a while for people to discern what God exactly wants uh, them to do in their life. Okay? I struggled with my vocation for a number of years. I struggled with my pastor who told me, you have a vocation. I kept hemming and hawing. He said, Ed, you got to go and try it. Uh, so I did my first year. And finally, I, you know, I, had, I still had questions. But finally, I let go and let, okay, God, you take me. And I still, even during the seminary, I struggled with it. And that was natural. You know, struggle a little bit here and there. I remember a, a young woman that, who struggled to discern whether the man she was dating was the right man to marry. Some of her friends didn't like him and had negative opinions. I told her, don't listen to that. Don't be afraid. No one will ever be perfect. She did marry um, the man, but was unable to have children of her own, but they began adopting children and have had a happy marriage. Brothers and sisters, every vocation in life has its crosses. If God showed us the crosses we would have to bear by becoming perhaps a priest or a nun or a brother or a uh, father or a husband and wife with a disabled child, if we knew that was going to happen, we'd probably say, oh, no, 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 I don't want to go that way. Ah, uh, no, 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 not me. Believe me, I've had my share of crosses and heartaches. Believe me, and I will have more in the future. But if I had known that stuff ahead of time, when I decided to become a priest in 1984, or decided to study for it, I probably would say, oh, find someone else, Lord. Oh my gosh, yeah. But God says, don't worry about that. Don't worry about the future. Because why? God will always give us the string to deal with those crosses. And the crosses are meant to make us strong to make us soldiers of Christ. That's what they're meant to do. Any of you who have been in the military, you know you have to go through boot camp. Yeah, and boot camp's not, not fun. It's not a party. It's tough. But in order to, be, to, get, to be, get into rank and become an enlisted officer or whatever, you have to go through that. Because it strengthens you, to discipline you. And that's what it is. Speaking of cross and difficulty, St. Paul was quick to condemn the ideology of licentiousness and impurity. Those who live lives of unrestricted pleasure were no friends of the cross of Jesus Christ. On this respect, Life Weekend, Paul's letter to the Corinthians, as we hear today, is a poignant reminder to us about the sanctity and holiness of the body and the importance of purity. The people of Corinth 
were notorious for sexual licentiousness. St. Paul had to correct their understanding about human sexuality and the beauty of married love as well as the beauty of a celibate calling. Unfortunately, our culture fosters a very selfish ideology. It considers the body as an idol. We want sexual intimacy without the consequences of children. We take contraception and we abort our babies when we don't want them. Couples would rather shack up and not get married because it's just too much work and too much sacrifice, as they say. I hate to say this, but the incoming administration in DC is going to do everything to make sure that women have access to reproductive services so they can either prevent pregnancy or terminate their babies. This kind of thinking is very demonic and we need to fight against it and continue. And this is destructive of family life and marriage. It does not help, it is poisonous. Babies are the fruit of married love. They are gifts from God, even if the body, even if the baby is conceived out of wedlock. They're still gifts from God. A husband and wife become co-creators with God as they create a new life. When you think about it, that's indeed a very wonderful concept. God is so awesome to allow a husband and wife to create a new life. Think about that for a minute. That's an amazing concept. But Satan hates it uh, with a passion. He wants to destroy it, disfigure the beauty of married love by bringing impurity and license, everything into it, to destroy it. And to, bring heart, and, and to bring selfishness. Because that's one of the enemies of the vocation of marriage. It's also the enemy for my vocation too as well. Selfishness, we gotta be careful. Hardship is coming. Brother says, hardship is coming whether you like it or not. Nevertheless, we are called by God to be witnesses to life. We are called to live out our vocations and to be stellar examples to others. I have repeatedly said this at weddings. I always say this. <laughs> I look at the bride and the groom and I look at the congregation and I'll say, I want to let you know, guys, that what you're doing today in this church, in this beautiful church, is a sign of contradiction to the people out there. They look at me puzzled and I said, I say, because the people in our world today think that what you're doing is completely inane, stupid. I said, why, why would you want to commit yourself to that? There's too much suffering, too much crosses, so much difficulty, and all the babies, all that. Why do you want to do that? You know, just go live together. So don't know, it's not a piece, marriage is a piece of paper. Don't, we don't believe in that anymore. And I said, that's, that's, that's what you're dealing with. And I tell them, as I tell everybody too, don't listen to that stuff. Be examples, be light and salt to the world. Show everyone why marriage is good. Just as I am obligated to show to my brother priests and others why my priesthood is good and why it's holy for our young people too as well. So married couples, live out your vocation with trust. You know, you know I think about um, <clears throat> how um, we, uh, at, 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 when I do the rosary, every day here in the church after mass one of the intentions i pray for you know what it is i always pray for an end to the attack against marriage and family life because the devil's constantly going after it just as we need to pray for vocations and good pastors and religious so we need to pray for good marriages that are centered in christ jesus i am convinced as saint paul said to the christians in rome for i am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of Christ, love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. How true Paul was in saying that 2,000 years ago. And we need, a, we need to inculcate that belief into our hearts. My friends, no matter what happens in the future, no matter how difficult life gets, no matter how much we are opposed for our religious beliefs, live out your vocation with gusto and hope. Be proud of your vocation. God is on our side. Let people see goodness and love exude from our vocations in life. In the name of the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit, amen. So now, let's stand for the profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begot, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven as he at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Lord assured his disciples that in him they would find what they were looking for, looking for our needs to be fulfilled. We now turn to the Lord with our prayers. For the church that, like Andrew, who stayed with the Lord and then invited his brother as well, we who have found out found our home in the Lord may go forth and bear witness to others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our leaders who have responded to the call to serve others in public office, that they may work humbly and tirelessly to serve the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That all our citizens may work to hasten the day when this country truly lives out the ideals for which Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. fought and gave his life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that during the week of prayer for Christian unity, which begins tomorrow, all Christians may be inspired to find solidarity with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are struggling to hear the Lord's voice in their lives or understand the nature of their call, let us pray to the Lord. For all precious human life from the safety of the mother's womb until natural death, let us pray to the Lord. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray in particular for peace, especially this week. Peace, we pray for the healing of this nation and the political divisions that, that are tearing it apart. We pray that God will bring peace and healing let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, help us to hear your call now and throughout our lives, and heed that call to the best of our abilities. Grant this in all the prayers we put, make through your Son, in whose name we work toward perfect unity as one body of Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. You may be seated now for the offertory, and this, this afternoon's Mass is being offered um, for Henry Skowronek, uh, requested by Rose, uh, Rose Saladino. Brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from the unending death, and by rising from dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we now acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosan in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosan in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when his once for the disciples. So now for us he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks and gave the chalice to people saying, take this, all of you, and drink it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which he poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion, death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you seat at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now until the day of eternity among the members of your Son whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, we can confirm us in unity so that together with Francis, our Pope, and Philippe, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone know. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, you to the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Do we have a doctor here? Is there a doctor or nurse? Uh, yeah, we, we need a doctor, okay. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grace to grant her peace and us with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace, Lord, be with you always. Amen. Right, okay. Okay. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Let's say a, let's say a Hail Mary for her, okay? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Jesus, we just ask that you heal this woman, to heal her and keep her safe from all harm. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word and... Communion Antiphon, you have prepared a table before me, and how precious is the chalice that quenches my thirst. For those who cannot now receive Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, we offer the following prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your good kindness, make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind, heart, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass now is under this go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And we close, here I am, Lord. 